There's not a single aspect of your life, if you were born in the United States of America, that does not have the fingerprint of oil and gas on it from the day you were born until the day you pass on. The oil industry here in Kern County makes a big difference. And if we think about all of the products that we live with every day that come from oil and gas, it's really astounding. Uh, the glasses I'm looking at you through or the devices that people are using to watch us right now, my toothbrush I used this morning, fertilizer that's used in the field, there are so many products that come from oil and gas every day that make a big difference in people's lives. And right here in Kern County, the industry makes a big difference as well. You know, our people live and work the, in the communities where we operate, right? And what we see is that we are making a big difference. Industry makes a big difference in those communities. The jobs that we create on average are $80,000 a year in industry. If you compare that to the average in Kern County, that's $50,000 a year. So that extra income makes a big deal in our communities to amplify the effects of our industry. The state of California became the largest oil and producing, oil and gas producing state in the United States way back in 1904. And we have been producing oil and gas for national security, quality of life. Ever since then, we've done it through two world wars, 22 presidents and 20 governors and we're still doing it today. Well, I think one of the common myths that uh, I hear about is people saying that, well, gosh, I've got to choose between oil and gas that I'm using today and renewables that we hear so much about. And I think the reality is, is that we're going to need liquid hydrocarbons in the state for years and decades to come. If one thinks, well, we, we want to get rid of oil and gas, we simply cannot because even in other countries, they're finding out in order to finance uh, the transition, if you will, or the integration of new energy sources, that takes money. Something has to make money. And in the interim, you've got to provide for quality of life, the things that we've all gotten used to, which is consistent, abundant, available energy. We do that right here in Kern County. That need will not go away, and it won't go away for many decades to come. We, we will have to continue utilizing oil and gas and petrochemicals for the foreseeable future, we have not come up with an alternative. And that is part of, unfortunately, the narrative that has to be displaced. So it's a question of how do these things coexist and how do we work together to make a difference in the state? Look, I think it's an exciting time to be working in the oil industry. We're gonna be innovating. We're gonna be working with the state to deliver both the needs of the state and the climate goals that are out there for all of us to go after. When we talk about this, this transition, just transition is a phrase people like to throw out. The just transition or the just integration has been taking place from the day we became carbon based, which was the day caveman originally began to use and control fire. Every single day, we wanna be able to do it better and get more from every barrel of oil for the betterment of mankind. What's important to us is that through that process of transformation, we don't leave behind the people that are gonna need the hydrocarbons that we produce today. If we think about the projections, how much we use oil and gas in the state, we see the need for liquid hydrocarbons for years and decades to come, even as we invite in other forms of energy, like hydrogen, like electricity for our cars and vehicles. Oil and gas will continue to play an important role in that mix. If we think about the impact there is on taxes, for example, uh, the industry contributes about $900 million of tax revenue into Kern County every year. Think about that, $900 million. Now just imagine for a moment, without oil and gas, we wouldn't have all of these products, but also we wouldn't have that tax revenue. Imagine if that was gone in a snap, what that would mean. It would mean 100 million less for our schools. It would mean 50 million less for things like firefighters. These are necessities for all of us. And that's why it's so important that we have a constructive dialogue in the state about the future of oil and gas, the role that it can continue to play. The biggest uh, importer of oil into the state of California right now is actually Ecuador. It's not Saudi Arabia anymore, it's Ecuador. Well, in Ecuador, in order to produce oil, they're destroying the Amazon rainforest at an alarming rate. Matter of fact, that portion of the Amazon basin used to be a carbon sink. It used to, 
naturally suck in more carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in the form of foliage than it emitted. Now it is a net emitter of carbon dioxide. And the reason being is because they don't care about the environment there the way we do here. So the reality, because we're buying 60% of the oil they produce, Californians waving the Go Green banner are financing the destruction of the Amazon rainforests. Part of the challenge I hear out there is very loud voices saying that we should stop production in the state. And I think that's a dangerous idea because so long as the state is demanding these liquid hydrocarbons and society needs it, our question is, where is it gonna come from? And what we have going for us here in Kern County are very strict environmental rules and regulations that are some of the strictest in the world. And so the choice before California is to say, where do we want that hydrocarbon to come from? Our view is that so long as California demands liquid hydrocarbons, California should be the ones delivering it. The alternative, of course, is to import more hydrocarbons from overseas. I was surprised and shocked by a report I saw the other day, which suggested that one out of seven gallons that we put in our tanks today in California come from producers that are producing and destroying the Amazon rainforest. I'm not sure many Californians realize that. So I think we have a crown jewel here in California in terms of our oil and gas production. We need to protect it even as we mature other sources of energy needs, other fuels. This is an and conversation. Every single day, we look at how we do it to come up with a better way, a more efficient way, a safer way, a more environmentally friendly way to actually enhance things so that we can be net neutral or actually capture carbon. We as an industry integrate uh, intermittent energy sources like solar and wind when it makes sense. Now we aren't standing still in ERA, of course, we are innovating. And our goal is to be a partner and a player in meeting the state's needs today and climate goals. Now, one of the things that we're excited about and we're working on is called carbon capture and storage. This is where carbon that would otherwise go to the air is captured and pumped safely deep underground. And this draws on many of the technologies and expertise that are resident in ERA and here in Kern County overall. We think this could make a big difference in the county, but these are long multi-year projects, hundreds of millions of dollars. And so we're really right now in the feasibility stage of this. And what we need is continued partnership from both the county of Kern and the state to move these ideas forward. Kern is one of 58 counties in the state of California. We have about two and a half percent of the state's population out of the state of California. Yet we produce 70 plus percent of all the oil and gas right here in Kern County. If anybody understands the ability and the right way to integrate emerging sources, it's Kern County. We do it better and larger than all the other counties put together. Well, ERA is uniquely positioned to play a significant role in the County of Kern. We have about 3,000 employees that work for ERA and we deliver 25% of the oil and gas that's produced here in the state. And that means safe, reliable, affordable energy for everybody in the state and the communities where we work and live. We have the blinders off and we are taking a look at every single opportunity because energy safety is critical component of life as it will be forever.